Good afternoon. Bonjour tout le monde. Um, I think it's exciting to be back here again, uh, making another housing announcement. I know I'm excited to be making another housing announcement in just uh, one month. But I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are gathered here today on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Lani Lenape, and the Atandaran peoples. I would like to also acknowledge the three indigenous nations that neighbor the city of London, the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, the Oneida Nation of the Thames, the Muncie Delaware Nations, who all continue to live uh, as sovereign nations with individual and unique languages and culture and customs, and with whom we share our land. I'm very excited to be welcoming you back to London West for today's historic housing announcement. I think we can all agree that housing remains a top priority and concern for all Canadians. In different age groups and demographics, housing continues to be the biggest conversation right now. And I have heard from many constituents who want to continue to talk about housing and the housing challenges that we're all facing, whether it's affordability, accessibility, or whether we have housing that's available and ready for us, this is something that we continue to talk about and we continue to deliver on. We know that ensuring housing affordability for all Canadians isn't quite the quick fix, but we need concrete terms, concrete actions, and a long-term plan to create more housing supply and ensure that all Canadians are set up for success in their housing. We need provinces, territories, cities, and towns working together in collaboration if we want to be successful in this effort. And that's what we're seeing here today. And we also need to continue to use every tool available to us to boost the housing supply. Uh, recently, uh, our recent investment here makes an ideal location for today's excitement, uh, exciting announcement. The first agreement between a municipality and the government of Canada under the Housing Accelerator Fund. The result is an action plan that will get us much more housing built for people of London and across the country, housing that is great in a growing city and growing needs. Prime Minister, in your last visit to London when you made a historic announcement for the Canada Dental Benefit, which happened here in the City of London, we saw it was last year in 2020, December of 2022, and today I can confidently say that 1,000, over 1,000 children here in London West have benefited from that Canada, child, uh, Canada Dental Benefit. So I'm more than confident that today's announcement, next time you're here next year, we'll be making and talking about the impact uh, and the concrete actions we're taking to chip at the growing needs of Canadians uh, and concerns that we have here in our community. And I am proud to say that it's always exciting to have you in our riding, making these groundbreaking announcements that have a real impact on Canadians. So it is my pleasure to welcome uh, the next speaker, which is the Right Honourable Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Welcome to London West again, Prime Minister. Merci, Ariel. Avant de commencer, euh, je veux offrir mes condoléances aux proches de Monique Bégin, Bégin euh, qui est décédée récemment. Euh, Monique était une femme extraordinaire, inspirante, euh, qui a servi son pays euh, avec euh, brio et excellence pendant euh, de longues années. She was a respected teacher, an advocate, and a trailblazer for Canadian women. So, on behalf of all I offer my deepest condolences to Monique Bejan's family and her loved ones. Uh, she will long be missed for the extraordinary leader she was, an extraordinary, inspiring woman. Merci encore, Ariel, pour ton introduction. Je suis très content d'être ici avec toi, avec Peter et Sean, à London, en Ontario. Sean, I'm pretty sure this is our first housing announcement together since you began your new role as Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities, but I look forward to many more, just like this one. Housing is a solvable problem, and we're all going to solve it if we work together. Canada has done it before, and we're going to do it again. It's also great to be here with Mayor Josh Morgan, who knows we need to build more homes faster here in London, but also right across the country because we're facing a shortage of housing right now. And that's why prices of homes have become far too high. It's not fair 
to young people who feel like cities are turning their backs on them. When housing is that ex expensive, young people feel like cities don't want them. They feel like they can't succeed. But if young people can't succeed in our cities, then where can they succeed? That's why we're addressing this. I mean, housing in big cities around the world has already become out of reach for many, 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 in places like New York, Paris, London, San Francisco. But we're not going to follow those examples. Les familles, les jeunes, tous les Canadiens s'attendent à ce que leurs leaders travaillent ensemble pour s'attaquer aux gros enjeux comme le logement. C'est pour la première fois qu'on retrousse nos manches pour construire plus de logements au Canada. On a réussi à le faire dans le passé. On va réussir encore si on travaille tous ensemble. When we launched the $4 billion Housing Accelerator Fund, a fund to build more homes faster, we told municipalities that they could access those funds with bold plans to eliminate red tape and remove barriers. On a été clair qu'il y a trop de réglementation municipale qui rend ça difficile de bâtir des logements pour nos communautés. On a été clair que les règles locales doivent changer et que les gouvernements locaux doivent être plus ambitieux. Et on va être là pour soutenir leurs ambitions. So here we are today with a very first agreement under the Housing Accelerator Fund. After we launched the fund, Mayor Josh Morgan and his team got to work. When we saw that Josh's plan was ambitious and serious, we said, okay, let's get him funding so he can fast track the building of more housing here in London. Josh, the Accelerator Fund was created to build more homes faster. And of all the mayors across the country, you were the fastest to step up with an absolutely visionary proposal. We put out framework of ambitious things we needed to see from municipalities in order to access this funding, to look at all the various barriers that are slowing down the construction of housing supply at a time when it's needed. And we asked the hardworking people at City Hall uh, and in the mayor's offices to step up to see what were those barriers that we could eliminate, how we could get shovels in the ground faster, how we could get people into homes, particularly affordable homes, particularly homes near, uh, uh, near transit infrastructure as quickly as possible. So based on Josh's success and the announcement we're making right now, I want to challenge other mayors right across the country to step up with their proposals too, so we can get building more homes, increasing supply, and lowering the prices for families. La promesse du Canada, c'est d'améliorer la qualité de vie à chaque génération. Ces temps-ci, le monde traverse un moment difficile. Plus que jamais, il faut continuer notre travail pour s'assurer que la promesse du Canada tienne. The promise of Canada. It's one that says that every generation gets to benefit from the hard work of the previous generation and succeed even more. Well, for far too many people, that promise of Canada seems under threat. And that's where Ariel and Peter and Sean and I and our entire team are focused on securing that promise of Canada. The promise that when you work hard, you can get ahead. That's what it's all about. We're focused on building more homes by working with all orders of government, with indigenous communities, with labor, and with private and non-profit partners, because that's what it'll take, everyone working together. I look forward to our caucus retreat this week to continue this work, and we'll have more to say very soon on our plan to make life and housing more affordable for Canadians. Canada is the very best country in the world. Let's keep working hard to make it even better. With that, I'm happy to pass it over to Sean Fraser. Sean. Thanks very much. Uh, look, welcome, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for what is uh, an important day uh, in the path forward for the federal government's housing policy that's going to get more homes built in this country. Uh, merci tout le monde. Avant de commencer, je veux remercier mes collègues pour être ici aujourd'hui et pour uh, m'accueillir à la City de London pour la, pour la première fois. Uh, this is an incredible city and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to gather with colleagues over the next few days uh, to discuss the path forward uh, for the Government of Canada, not just on housing, but on some of the policy areas that we know are most important to Canadians. 
Uh, but specific to today's announcement, let me start by acknowledging uh, we're living in a housing crisis in this country. It's impacting real people in real communities in very, very real ways. Uh, the reality is there's no one reason uh, why there's a housing shortage that's impacting families. There's a number of different reasons. And today's announcement is addressing one of them head on. And that's the way that cities build homes in this country. And in some instances, the way that cities don't build homes in this country. The reality is over the course of generations, we've seen different communities across the country make decisions that actively restrict the ability of communities to build houses for their residents. This isn't okay. It manifests itself in the most bizarre ways with sluggish permit uh, approval processes, with zoning challenges that prevent housing from being built, with a lack of transit and public infrastructure that make communities livable. Today we're announcing a new path forward and we're starting here in London. We're going to use federal leadership and federal funding to change the way that cities build houses. You know, London is an extraordinary example that's going to benefit from this fund. This is a $4 billion fund, by the way, that is a direct injection into the bottom line of cities who actually change the way that they build homes. The fund to accelerate the construction of logements is an injection of 4 milliards de dollars for the community and for the government who change the façon dont ils construisent the logements. It is essential to construct des logements abordable for tout le monde, partout au pays. And folks, we're starting here uh, today. And one of the reasons I find London is particularly appropriate is not just because the city and the mayor demonstrated leadership to get out the door uh, most quickly, uh, but because the challenges facing London are indicative of some of the challenges that we experience in cities across this country. This is an incredible community with a growing economy, with post-secondary institutions that are first rate at Fanshawe College, Western, where I met student leaders just yesterday to discuss some of the housing challenges that the student bodies are facing. And despite the opportunities for growth, despite the vibrancy of the community, despite the many opportunities I see here in London, there's real challenges. I met with service providers for vulnerable populations yesterday who described to me the extent of the homelessness challenges that are actually translating into healthcare challenges for their community. Some of the students that I met with told me that they're living 40 minutes away from their campus and don't have meaningful access to transit, uh, which they need, because they can't find a place they can afford close to their classes. When you spend almost an hour and a half a day commuting to classes, that's time you're not spending building social relationships. That's time that you're not spending focused on your studies at a time in your life when that's what you should be doing. We can change that if we actually work together. There's additional challenges facing this part of Ontario in particular, the drive to buy phenomenon that has seen people come down the 401 from the GTA until they can afford a place to live, is putting unique and unprecedented pressures on the cost of homes here and the cost of a place to rent. We can change this if we work together. Look, I want to tell you a story about how this announcement came to be. This is a project that started shortly after I became uh, the Minister Responsible for Housing when I had the opportunity to leaf through the Housing Accelerator Fund applications. London's was particularly strong. I decided I was going to write a letter uh, to Mayor Josh Morgan indicating some of the reasons I thought he had a strong application, including their partnership with nonprofits, including changes to their zoning density policy including the adoption of digital permits that's going to actually speed up the process of giving permission to say, yes, we want to build homes in this community. And I can't tell you how excited I was because I had the opportunity to push them a little further. And I said, I like what you're trying to do, but I think we can do more if we work together. You can do more to build housing near university campuses and college campuses. You can do more to build housing near transit. You can do more to legalize housing because communities across this country, in many instances, make it illegal to build the kinds of homes that will solve the housing crisis. In particular, I asked the city council and the mayor to increase their ambition to allow people who own a piece of land in this city to build up to four units, as of right, without having changes to the way that they need to amend bylaws. It's something you can do. And I'll tell you, the mayor's response probably led to the most optimistic moment I have had since I assumed this portfolio. He wrote me back and said, we're going to build houses near our post-secondary institutions. We're going to build houses near transit stations. And you know what? They didn't just tell me they were going to legalize housing. Within days, they did it. They hosted a special council meeting where unanimously, 15 to 0, the council under Josh Morgan's leadership approved four units as of right for properties in this city. This is extraordinary. And it's leading to a $74 million contribution from the Housing Accelerator Fund to the City of London that's going to get more homes built in this community. Now, as much as I want to spend my time on the microphone saying thank you uh, to the Mayor, and, and sincerely, Josh, thank you, your leadership, it's so much bigger than London. This has national implications. But that's not my message today. 
My message is to every mayor, to every council, to every city, to every community in this country. If you want me to show up, if you want the federal government to show up with financial investments that will directly support your ability to build more homes, give us a reason. A new standard has been set and we have new expectations. We want you to build houses near transit. We want you to build houses near campuses. We want you to build houses so families can access the services that they need. And we want you to legalize housing. It's not too much to ask. By working together and having the federal government have a direct financial incentive to change the way that cities build houses, we can solve this aspect of the housing crisis. I want to say thank you in particular to the mayor, but also uh, to my colleagues. Uh, Peter Fragiscatos and Ariel Kayabag are, are phenomenal local representatives. When I have the benefit of people who can educate me on the challenges and opportunities facing their community, it makes my job an awful lot easier. Uh, London is very, very lucky to have their representation. I'm very lucky to serve alongside them in the House of Commons. But if I, conclude, uh, if I could conclude with one message, uh, today isn't about $74 million. It's not just about municipal zoning changes. It's about thousands of families who are going to have a place to live that they might actually be able to afford. And it's about the model that we have created that is going to be replicated in the weeks and months ahead in cities right across Canada, big and small. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, the Mayor of the City of London, uh, Josh Morgan. Josh, please come to the microphone. Well, first off, um, let me say thank you. Um, you know, I remember um, running in a campaign um, not too long ago and I said I wanted the city to punch above its weight. I wanted the city to set an example for the rest of the country and I, I can't say how much I appreciate the words uh, that have just been said about the incredible work that we've been trying to do here in the city. I want to recognize uh, members of council in attendance and usually I go through and I name them but I think pretty much every member of council is in attendance because why wouldn't you be for 74 million dollars? I know members of the senior leadership team here are uh, uh, present as well. And let me say um, first off thank you to um, MPs Fragiscatos and Kayabaga for being strong advocates for our city. Um, we appreciate having you here. We appreciate your work on the housing file and we appreciate your advocacy on behalf of our city uh, with the government on many other issues. Um, to Housing and Infrastructure Minister Fraser, um, you know, I appreciate all, all of the things that you just said, but I also appreciate our frank and honest dialogue that we had since you've become minister about how we work together to actually create housing in this city and in this country. Uh, to the Prime Minister, it's always great to have you in the city, um, not just because you usually bring great announcements, um, but uh, it's great for you to have the caucus here to engage, to see a city, to see an example of both the opportunities and the challenges that a city like London showcases for what are, ex what are replicated in many cities across this country. Let me say, this is the most significant housing and housing-related infrastructure investment in London's history. We are honoured to be the first city in Canada to receive funding as part of the Housing Accelerator Fund. This is a testament to the hard work of city staff, the bold leadership demonstrated by City Council, and the contributions from so many of our community partners. This $74 million investment will fast track the creation of over 2,000 additional housing units over the next three years, while allowing for us to support the creation of thousands of more in the years to come. Specifically, this fund will help us invest in affordable housing, invest in housing related infrastructure, invest in community related infrastructure which includes supports for our whole of community health and homelessness system response. In addition, this money will also allow us to provide financial incentives for housing near rapid transit routes, conversions of vacant commercial space into housing units in our downtown and other areas, as well as bringing forward zoning changes to promote transit friendly higher density development. We'll also streamline and modernize the development and business approvals process. And as we toured the building behind me, and as we talk about the units and the millions of dollars, I want everybody to think about your home, the place that you get to go back to tonight after all this is over. That's a home. That's a place where you have dinner, where you have holidays, where you get dressed to go out for Halloween, where you cry, where you love, where you grow a family. You know, this isn't just about $74 million and thousands of units. This is about creating homes for people in our city and people in our country. Homes where they'll have memories. Homes where they'll share friendships. Homes will do all those things in the safety and security of having a place where they can just simply be themselves 
and think about other things and not have to worry about the struggles of affordability and other challenges that we see in our city. I want to thank, again, Prime Minister Trudeau, Housing Minister Fraser, and of course, our two MBs, MPs behind us. Again, this is, tr this is a tremendous opportunity for our city to not only create these homes, create this housing, um, and, and really set the tone and the stage for the rest of the country to follow, but also, this is that landmark investment, and at the end of the day, what's most important is that it will positively impact thousands of lives in our city for generations to come. Thank you so much for this investment. Couldn't be happier to be here today. Oh. And of course, I did something wrong. I'm supposed to introduce uh, MP Peter Frascescatos, who will wrap up uh, today's conference. Thank you very much. Super job. Super job. Mayor, you have done nothing wrong at all. You've done everything right. Uh, you put into a sharp focus what's at stake here. And to you, to members of council, thank you very much for acting in the very bold way that you have. To city staff as well. Uh, this sets the standard, as Minister Fraser just said. Uh, to you, Minister Fraser, thank you very much. Uh, one of your first uh, calls after becoming minister was to the City of London, was to myself and MP Kayabaga. Really appreciate what uh, you and your team have helped to make possible today. And of course, Prime Minister, thank you for continuing to have the back of our community just down the road, as we all know, is St. Thomas, Volkswagen, just down the road from there, Stellantis, thousands of direct and indirect jobs. But today, of course, is about housing and making this community more prosperous in that regard. With that said, I'm going to open it up to questions and answers now for media. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Merci à vous tous. We have 20 minutes for questions for media. Nous avons 20 minutes pour les questions des médias, et on va commencer avec Marika Walsh. Good afternoon, Prime Minister Marika Walsh with the Globe and Mail. Your government's known for more than a year now, or about a year now, that the plans in place leave Canadians 3.5 million housing units short by 2030. So why today are you only updating on a plan that falls short, rather than explaining to Canadians what more you will do? Uh, Earlier this year, we announced the Housing Accelerator, uh, which is an, an investment of $4 billion uh, to municipalities across the country uh, to accelerate uh, zoning, densification, uh, to reward ambition and to take away so many of the different barriers uh, that are preventing housing stock from being built across the country. Now, we know housing is a crisis that doesn't have a single solution, but a big part of it is uh, going to be working with municipalities, as we did with the wrapping ha Rapid Housing uh, Initiative, to build uh, housing like this. Uh, this today is the first announcement uh, around the ha housing accelerator. There will be many more to come as we step up on solving this challenge. Canada has solved housing supply challenges in the past, whether it was after World War II, whether it was when the boomers came of age, uh, we are now uh, embarking upon a significant effort uh, to solve this once again for all Canadians. The accelerator fund is factored in to the calculations from your own federal agency that says Canada is short 3.5 million homes by 2030. So can you clarify for voters who are struggling, as you've acknowledged several times now but not given an answer to, Will your government set out a plan that fills that gap entirely? We know that housing is a challenge, uh, that the solution happens over years. Uh, and that's why we've been working over the past years to deliver both immediate housing through initiatives like the Rapid Housing Initiative, but also uh, working with partners, municipal partners, provincial partners, private sector, public sector partners to make sure we're doing everything we can to build more housing quickly. We'll, of course, have more to announce in the coming days, uh, but the fact is that from the national housing strategy we put forward in 2017 to the work we're continuing to do with things like the Housing Accelerator and the Rapid Housing Initiative, um, we're there to respond to the challenge. Canadians are struggling right across the country, uh, and that's why we're responding. Question, question. Émilie Bergeron, La Presse canadienne. Bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, votre gouvernement insiste beaucoup dans les derniers jours sur son bilan et sur des investissements en logement qui ont déjà été annoncés, comme pour le fonds d'accélération, qui a été annoncé quand même il y a longtemps, euh, la première fois dans le budget 2022. Euh, 
Mais maintenant, les, la crise du logement touche aussi euh, des gens qui font bien plus que le salaire moyen. Euh, votre député euh, qui est avec vous, Mme Kayabaga, a parlé de ses propres difficultés euh, hier à trouver un logement. Euh, qu Qu'est-ce qu que vous allez faire pour aider ces gens-là et comment allez-vous vous adapter rapidement? Un des problèmes fondamentaux au niveau du logement, c'est l'offre. Ça fait des décennies maintenant que différents paliers de gouvernement et différents euh, gouvernements euh, ont sous-investi dans le logement. C'est d'ailleurs pour ça euh, qu'on a établi la stratégie nationale sur le logement en 2017, parce que pendant dix ans, euh, le gouvernement conservateur à Ottawa avait complètement refusé de faire quelque investissement que ce soit en logement. Et donc, on a du rattrapage à faire en tant que pays. Ça, on le sait très bien. Mais quand il n'y a pas assez de logements abordables, ça met de la pression sur tous les paliers socio-économiques. Et on se retrouve maintenant dans une situation où même euh, des gens euh, bien nantis ont de la difficulté avec le logement. La solution, c'est de s'assurer que tout le monde soit en train de travailler ensemble. La solution, c'est d'avoir encore plus d'ambition et de permettre, avec l'argent du fédéral, encore plus d'ambition au niveau des municipalités. C'est exactement les genres de partenariats que nous annonçons aujourd'hui avec le maire Morgan. Et on va continuer de faire ça à travers le pays. Mais pourquoi ça a pris autant de temps euh, à avoir une première entente euh, avec euh, ce fonds d'accélération qui a été annoncé pour la première fois dans le budget 2022 et puis qui après a été créé seulement en 2023? Il faudrait demander euh, aux différents maires pourquoi ça, si, ça a pris autant de temps. Je suis très content euh, qu'on a pu annoncer aujourd'hui euh, avec le maire Morgan. Mais euh, comme vous avez entendu de notre ministre des Logements, euh, on appelle à tous les maires à travers le pays de faire preuve d'ambition, d'être là pour accepter les, les, euh, les investissements du fédéral pour accélérer la densification, la construction, euh, l'accélération la, de zonage euh, et de permis. Euh, tout ça qui va nous permettre euh, de répondre à ce défi au niveau des logements. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Mackenzie Gray with Global News. I want to go back to something you said in your introduction. You said that the price of homes are far too high. Does that mean you'd like to see house prices come down? I think one of the things that we know uh, is that prices, uh, house pricing cannot continue to go up. Uh, we have far too many people who, you know, I've you know, heard directly from so many families who, as of a few years ago, said, okay, we're going to put aside money and we're going to be able to set up a down payment. And a few years later, after working hard and setting money aside, they look to see where they are, they're going to be able to buy soon, and they are further away from buying a home than they were just a few years before because housing prices are going up so quickly. That's a problem of supply. That's that we as a country are not building enough housing quickly. That's why this $4 billion housing accelerator fund is designed to leverage the capacities of municipalities, to work with uh, developers, to work with the private sector, to work with nonprofit sectors, to build more housing supply to match the desires and the needs of Canadian families across the country and across socioeconomic uh, levels. To follow up on Marika's question, the, the deputy chief economist at CMHC says house pri uh, housing starts need to double this year, and the programs that you've already announced are factored into their 3.5 million estimate. Will you commit to a plan? that meets the 3.5 million housing start? We, we know um, that housing takes a lot of work to build and it takes a lot of people working together. One of the things that we did with the, rousing, uh, the rapid housing initiative uh, we put forward a few years ago uh, was made modest project projections on how many units it would build and uh, those projections were blown past because it was a, such a, a, an oversubscribed and successful program across the country. That's why we took on a phase two of the rapid housing program and now a phase three with the rapid housing program which built, is building this place right behind us. So we know uh, that as the federal government steps up and creates those partnerships, makes those investments and takes clear and strong action, we can solve these troubles. Prochaine question. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Raymond Filion de TVA. Vous allez rencontrer pour la première fois depuis le mois de juin, cet après-midi, l'ensemble de vos députés. Il y a de la grogne dans votre caucus, beaucoup d'inquiétudes par rapport au sondage. Certains s'interrogent même sur votre capacité à vous, là, à savoir si vous êtes encore l'homme de la situation. 
Qu'est-ce que vous allez leur dire à ces députés cet après-midi? Ben, cet après-midi, je vais passer beaucoup de temps à écouter. Il euh, y a de la grogne à travers le pays. C'est un moment extrêmement difficile pour quasiment tous les Canadiens. On est en train de faire face à, à des prix trop élevés pour le logement, pour l'épicerie, pour l'essence. Le, le coût de la vie cause énormément de difficultés, en même temps qu'on est en train de voir les impacts des changements climatiques, de l'instabilité géopolitique, des grands défis sur l'horizon. Les gens sont inquiets pour leur avenir, sont inquiets pour l'avenir de leurs enfants. C'est pour ça que, effectivement, nos députés qui font une job extraordinaire à écouter, à être là pour leurs concitoyens, euh, vont euh, être en train de partager ce que moi aussi j'ai entendu dans toutes mes conversations à travers l'été, que les Canadiens ont besoin d'aide, ont besoin qu'on sécurise cette promesse qui a toujours été au cœur du Canada, qu'à chaque génération, on peut réussir encore plus que la génération antérieure. La réalité que les gens sont inquiets que ce n'est plus la réalité. Et donc, euh, on va être en train de travailler, de parler de comment on va continuer de travailler pour euh, répondre à ces enjeux-là. Avec les sondages qui vous sont personnellement très défavorables, il y a même une majorité de Canadiens dans un récent sondage qui disait que ce serait le temps de M. Trudeau de laisser sa place à quelqu'un d'autre. Est-ce que c'est une possibilité que vous avez envisagée? On est à deux ans des prochaines élections. Euh, moi, je continue à faire mon travail. Il y a beaucoup de travail important à faire pour livrer pour les Canadiens pendant ces moments difficiles. Et euh, je reste euh, enthousiaste et acharné par rapport à ce travail. Next question. Judy Trin with CTV News. The Housing Accelerator Fund was announced in the 2022 budget. Why did it take so long to come out with one announcement for one city? As you know, no one order of government can solve housing on its own. It takes all of us working together. We put forward the Housing Accelerator Fund so that municipalities uh, like the City of London uh, could step up with ambitious plans. And I'm uh, really happy that, uh, that Josh has. It doesn't surprise me that the City of London, that has always been a leader in so many different things, uh, is stepping up at this. But I'm uh, happy to turn it over to uh, Sean Fraser, our Housing Minister, to talk further about the Housing Accelerator Fund, um, because I answered that question a little earlier. Sean. Sure. Uh, th thanks very much, uh, Judy. And if you understand the way that this fund has come together, uh, it's uh, very clear that there was a path that brought us here today. Uh, so, of course, the fund was initially announced uh, in the, the federal budget that you mentioned. Uh, after the actual funding was in place, uh, we had to fill out the details of the policy. But importantly, we had to give communities an opportunity to build their plans uh, because communities weren't necessarily expecting the federal government to put $4 billion in direct cash injections on the table that was going to allow them to densify their communities to build the kind of infrastructure that would allow them to build more houses, to adopt new digital systems they may not have been thinking about before. One of the strengths of the fund is even before you get to the funding announcements, communities right across Canada have been thinking about how they can lead the way to build more homes in their own community. Uh, after communities had the opportunity to put their thoughts together, we rolled in an official application process, which recently came to a close. Uh, after the uh, official process came to a close, we had the opportunity to compare some of the different plans, uh, given the different levels of ambition the communities of across Canada have demonstrated. Uh, so you should expect to see, after the first announcement has been made, uh, not years go by before we roll this out in other communities, uh, but literally over the next number of weeks and months, uh, we're going to be making similar announcements that are going to have nuanced solutions that meet local challenges and communities in every region of this country. Thanks, Minister. I'd like to just give my second question to the uh, Western Gazette reporter that's uh, here. Wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'm Hannah Alper. I'm with the Western Gazette. And I was just wondering, you were talking about the promise of Canada. And while that's a reality for many Canadians, also not, especially for many students and peers like myself, we're scared for our future after graduation, not wondering if we're going and knowing if we're going to be able to get a house or apartment for decades after we graduate. So besides eliminating interest on Canada student loans, what else are you planning on doing on helping students with housing and affordability? Well, as the first part, Hannah, we're making sure that you can see yourself in a home in the coming years. So many students are simply giving up on it, looking at what it might cost, looking at the amount of down payment, looking at the uh, availability of housing and saying, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to buy a house in the neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, and that's not right. And that's exactly why uh, we have decided to roll up our sleeves as aggressively as we have and put $4 billion on the table 
not $4 billion worth of hammers and nails and planks so we can build housing ourselves, but to multiply that $4 billion with uh, the energy and the efforts of the municipalities and leaders across the country, provinces, partners in the private sector and the not-for-profit sector who will get busy building homes, uh, making sure that the uh, undersupply in our housing uh, stock across this country is settled so that uh, young people will be able to find affordable renting ho rental housing while they build up their down payments with things like the tax-free savings account that we put on uh, so that they can uh, put a down payment on a home as they uh, begin to start a family. That's a dream that everyone in this country should have and that's a dream that we're solving for with these kinds of uh, initiatives putting forward. Question Thank you, Hannah. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Pour euh, revenir sur la question de mon collègue Raymond qui parlait de la grogne au sein de votre caucus, vous avez répondu en parlant de la grogne des Canadiens, mais il est question de vos députés, des députés qui font des sorties anonymes dans les médias pour vous pousser, euh, tenter de vous pousser vers la sortie, là, essentiellement. Qu'est-ce que vous leur répondez à ces députés-là? J'ai eu énormément de conversations avec des députés euh, de mon équipe au cours des derniers mois, au cours de l'été, euh, au cours des dernières semaines aussi. Euh, et on a parlé franchement de tous les défis euh, auxquels on fait face en tant que pays et comment on va les résoudre ensemble. Euh, moi, je suis euh, très content euh, de, de pouvoir me rassembler ici avec eux euh, pendant les prochains jours. On va avoir des conversations franches, mais on va aussi passer la plus grande partie de notre énergie pour parler de comment on va répondre aux besoins des Canadiens. Hein, les gens ne veulent pas que les politiciens parlent d'eux-mêmes. Les gens veulent que les politiciens se concentrent sur leurs défis. C'est exactement ce qu'on va faire. Sur un autre sujet complètement, euh, celui des, euh, de la transformation euh, de genre. Il y a les conservateurs, en fait, semaine, euh, la fin de semaine dernière, qui ont fait adopter une résolution pour euh, interdire ça pour les mineurs. On en parle aussi à l'Assemblée nationale. En fait, c'est plus un débat sur les toilettes mixtes. Je, je voudrais savoir si, dans un premier temps, vous estimez qu'il faut encadrer la transformation de, de genre pour les mineurs. Puis, dans un deuxième temps, si vous pensez que ça prend un débat euh, de société sur ce euh, ces enjeux-là? Moi, la préoccupation que j'ai, c'est que depuis plusieurs années, on voit une augmentation des crimes de haine dans notre société. Ici, à London, on ne peut que penser à la famille Afzal, qui ont été tués de façon horrible à cause de l'islamophobie. On voit des, euh, des parades de la fierté à travers le pays qui ont besoin de plus de sécurité ou qui ont été, qui ont été annulés à cause euh, de préoccupations au niveau de la violence. On est en train de vivre des situations où des jeunes de la communauté de LGBTQI+, font face à plus de crises de santé mentale, plus euh, de, de dangers de suicide, on a besoin d'être là, les uns pour les autres. Des leaders, des vrais leaders, on est là pour protéger les Canadiens, d'être là pour se défendre les uns les autres pendant qu'on bâtit un monde meilleur. Toutes ces discussions qui visent à susciter de la division et même de la haine n'ont pas leur place au Canada. On doit être là pour écouter, on doit être là pour travailler ensemble, on doit être là pour défendre les droits de tout le monde pendant qu'on ba qu bâtit une économie qui fonctionne pour tous les Canadiens. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. Al Sweeney from CHCH in Hamilton. Uh, to follow up your comment that housing prices can't go up, what do you consider affordable? The average price in Ontario now is put at $856,000 for a home. How much does that have to come down to be affordable? I think, uh, obviously, our economy continues to grow. We have uh, uh, really good job numbers across the country. But Canadians, even as the economy is growing, even as salaries are going up, are finding it harder and harder uh, to buy homes, to find affordable renting, rental, uh, rental stock. These are the things that we are addressing right now. Obviously, uh, prices in downtown Toronto or even downtown Hamilton are going to be very different from prices in other parts of the country. But everywhere, they're too high. That's why it's essential that everyone works together collaboratively. You need different orders of government, different uh, groups from private sector to public sector and nonprofit, 
to be working together to solve this challenge, and that's exactly what we're doing with the Housing Accelerator. A supplementary, this is housing and tax policy. Maybe the minister wants to weigh in on this. The principal residence exemption, this came up in the election last year. Um, it's part of the formula that has pushed up housing prices with people using their homes as a, a tax-free investment. Any thought of eliminating or moderating the PRE? I'm actually happy to turn to the minister for that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, and, and look, maybe if I can take a crack at your, your first question too before I, I supplement it with, uh, with, with the second. Um, it's really important that we don't just look at simplistic metrics uh, about average home prices if we're actually going to solve the problem. Because what actually matters is that we have housing stock available across the housing continuum so that everybody who lives in a community has the opportunity to find a place that they can afford. So though the average may be uh, very high, what's more important to me is that there's housing available for low-income families, there's housing available for middle-income families, uh, and for everybody along the income spectrum. So less important uh, is the the average home price, and more important is the availability of stock at prices people can actually afford. On the uh, principal residence exemption, we don't have plans uh, to get away with that, uh, to do away with that particular policy. Uh, I've seen the Conservative Party uh, routinely cite uh, plans that they pull out of thin air uh, that the government has uh, plans to actually do away with that exemption. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly where they've dreamed up that, uh, that particular policy. Uh, we are uh, putting together a series of measures that address the different unique problems that are contributing to Canada's housing crisis, including today with the Housing Accelerator Fund to change the way cities build homes. We will be looking at measures that change the financial equation for builders to build in light of the higher interest environment that they're operating in. We will be looking for ways to boost the productive capacity through training, through immigration, and through innovation by having more homes built in factories, among other things. Uh, if we actually look at the unique problems facing communities, facing families, and facing the housing sector, I'm confident we can actually solve these problems. Prochaine question. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau. Laurence Martin, Radio-Canada. Euh, un de vos députés euh, m'a dit « Justin Trudeau a peut-être aidé à nous faire aller en 2015, mais là, il nous nuit plus qu'autre chose. Quand est-ce qu'un chef de parti doit partir? » Écoutez, euh, on, a, on a deux bonnes journées de conversation avec les députés où on va avoir des conversations très franches. Mais je peux vous dire euh, que l'équipe euh, est prête à affronter tous les défis auxquels on fait face en tant que, en, en tant que pays. Euh, et je sais euh, qu'on a beaucoup de travail à faire, mais c'est ce à quoi les Canadiens s'attendent parce qu'on est, est en train de vivre des moments difficiles, que ce soit euh, l'inflation qui à la baisse, mais l'épicerie est encore trop chère, que ce soit au niveau euh, des logements, on est en train de mettre des plans euh, de l'avant pour euh, résoudre ce problème d'offre de logement, logement, entre autres. Euh, il y a du travail à faire, puis nous, on reste concentrés là-dessus. Avant de poser ma deuxième question, est-ce que je peux juste avoir une traduction en anglais on your leadership being contested? Just... Um, uh, I'm going to be focusing on engaging with, uh, with, uh, with my uh, fellow MPs. Uh, we're going to talk about all the challenges we're facing. We're going to talk about how to solve them. Um, Pre question. Il est où le seuil pour vous si le mécontentement gagne plus de députés? À partir de quand vous vous dites c'est fini? Écoutez, euh, je vais avoir de bonnes conversations avec mes députés, mais je peux vous dire, euh, je suis là pour continuer le travail qu'on a fait pendant euh, bien des années pour euh, bâtir un Canada meilleur, pour sortir des millions de personnes de la pauvreté, pour créer des milliers de jobs, euh, pour euh, lutter contre les changements climatiques, pour avancer sur la réconciliation, pas juste pour des causes morales, mais pour des causes économiques. Euh, on a fait beaucoup dans ce pays. On va continuer de faire beaucoup. J'ai énormément d'ambition pour ce pays et j'ai hâte de continuer le beau travail qu'on fait ensemble. Thank you everyone. That will conclude today's press conference. Merci, Merci à tous. Ça va mettre fin à la conférence presse. Thank you guys.